Now I know that you're making wood projects all the time, as opposed to buying something from a store. When you make your own projects, you have complete control over the selection of the wood. You can look at things like grain direction and grain color and a host of other variables. In fact, in this case, what we've done is we've taken a piece of solid wood, we've bandsawed it, and actually bookmatched it. When you do something like that in wood, you provide an unbelievable array of potential possibilities for beautifying almost any project. This is a technique we've used for a solid panel door, but let me show you what you can do with a piece of veneered plywood. Now on veneered plywood, the veneering is somewhat random. And if I want to get an 8 inch by 12 inch panel out of a piece of veneered plywood, the easiest way to do it is to make a mask like this. I can take this mask and gently slide it back and forth or up and down over this panel, finding the best grain pattern, and it makes for a great project. Now it is a little bit more expensive, but you'll find that what comes out of it will show true master craftsmanship. And lastly, when selecting wood, look for one whose grain pattern runs parallel to the board. You can see on this one it runs slightly uphill, and if we were to use this in a drawer front, it would make that drawer look like it's out of line. The last thing is flat sawn material normally yields what's called a cathedral pattern. You can see that in this piece here. That cathedral pattern should always be pointing up. People generally like to be happy, and a cathedral pattern pointing up will keep them that way. Choosing a wood for a project is more important than trying to find a wood that is readily available or maybe one of your personal favorites. Having a little historical knowledge of wood or some of the special considerations for outdoor furniture is important when choosing that wood. The first would be making shaker furniture out of either maple or cherry. You may want to try something like mahogany for upscale colonial furniture. And lastly, quarter sawn oak is just perfect for arts and crafts furniture. As we move into exterior furniture, you may want to change your choices of wood just a little bit. One of the first things would be using something like cypress. You could also use redwood, a traditional favorite. Western red cedar is easily available for most people. White oak works very well outside as opposed to red oak. And finally, teak makes a great choice for outdoor projects. And one last consideration, when choosing wood for outdoor projects, make sure to eliminate those boards that have sapwood, that area that's a little bit lighter colored towards the outside edge of the board. They offer a lot less resistance to water. And even after you've used some of this wood to make your outdoor furniture, there are a couple of things that you can do to protect it even more. The first is to apply a little bit of finish to the end grain and allow that to soak up, which would keep that weathering problem to a minimum. And also you can use these little nylon feet as protection to keep the wood itself from sitting on wet ground. You've bought the best lumber you ever bought. It's clear and it's straight, and you bring it back to your shop and stack it up in a big pile. But when you go to use it, you find out most of those boards that look straight to start with now have bows and cups in them. The reason is the humidity level at the store where you bought it and where you're planning on using it are different. And as moisture goes into or comes out of that wood, unless it can do it evenly, the board will twist and cup to make up for the difference. Here's a real quick tip on how to keep that from happening or at least minimize the chances. It's called stickering. I've done some of that here. I've taken some three quarter by three quarter inch scrap stock. The important part is that they're all the same dimension and just laid them out evenly. By taking these boards and stacking them, as changes in humidity and temperature take place in your shop, these boards will evenly take in and give off moisture. It's a great way to preserve wood as straight and as true as you bought it, and when you're ready to use it, you'll be happy that you did it this way. When edge joining boards for a glue up, it's a good idea to shuffle the boards to get the correct grain color and grain direction match. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this. One of the ways is just to kind of move boards up and down until you see that the grain pattern from one kind of blends into the, the grain pattern from another. You may also notice on a board like this that there are some sap lines in there. This is a lighter area of the wood, and we really don't want that on a finished top. So what I would do with this particular board is rotate it to the opposite side to eliminate that sap. And if you look at these boards, it almost appears like this board could be on the outside edge. So I would slide this board down and move this one to it. And now again, we would keep realigning these boards until we feel that we get the correct grain patterns and the color match that we want, and we're all set for that glue up. And once we feel that we've gotten the correct alignment, just take a piece of chalk and mark this across to show that. That's one method that's used quite a bit, but I like another one. I will take my boards and actually lay them 1-1, 2-2, and 3-3. Three, three. 
I know these edges have to go together because of the way they're marked, but when I take them to the joiner to clean up at these somewhat ragged edges, it makes it a whole lot easier to joint boards three and three and two and two without worrying about which part of the arrow I'm working on. And as long as we've got the wood out here, let me show you one more technique for using grain direction to your benefit. If we were laying out a table leg, it's a good idea to have as much of the long direction of that grain running in line with the table leg. That way any spot in here will not be crossed by grain direction running the opposite way, making for a weaker joint. So we can kind of move this up or down in here and maybe a little bit left or right until we find most of the grain line runs through this, preventing any of those spots from being ultimately weak. Mm -hmm.